So chapter seven, section five deals with exponential and logarithmic equations. So just like with what we were doing before, this involves a lot of the things that we learned in the last couple sections. So our first example, we need to solve the exponential equation and this has a common base. So we're gonna deal with some that have common bases and some that do not have common bases. So here, these two have a common base. If we look at them, we know that two goes into both of them. So our base for both of these are gonna be two. And we know that, let's, I'm gonna write it on the side here. So we have two to the first power is two. Two to the second power is four. Two to the third power is eight. So eight, we're gonna switch it out for two to the third power. If we keep going, two to the fourth power is 16. So we're gonna switch out this 16 for two to the fourth power, and then we still have this three X that we need to keep there also. So I just changed both of these to have the same base. So now we can cross off the bases, cancel them out, and just set the rest of the problem equal to each other. So we're gonna cross out the twos, and we have four, times 3x is equal to 3. So I just got rid of the bases and set the rest equal to each other. And now I can solve this for x. So we have 4 times 3x, which is 12x, is equal to 3. And then we can divide 12 from both sides. So we get x is equal to 3 over 12, which simplifies to 1 over 4. So the next example, we're going to solve the same way. 2 is already broken down as much as it can go, but we can get 32 to have the base of 2, so then we can cross them off. So if we know that 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 5th would be 32. So we can change this 32 to become 2 to the 5th power. So I'm going to set these equal to each other. So we have 2 raised to the 5x plus 1 equal to 2 raised to the 5th power. Now that our bases are the same, we can just get rid of the bases and just set the rest equal to each other. So we have 5x plus 1 is equal to 5. And now this is a simple equation that we can solve for x. We can subtract 1 on both sides. So we have 5x is equal to 4. And then we can divide 5. So we get x is equal to 4 over 5. Any questions here? Here we're gonna see what to do when we have different bases. So we can't get this 285 to look like 15. We can't, we know that 15 squared is 225 and 15 cubed would be a lot higher than 285. It would be Three thousand three hundred and seventy five. So we can't get this to have the same base. So what we need to do now is take the log of both sides of this equation. So we have the log of 15 raised to the 3x is equal to 
the log of 285. So it's important that we take the log of both sides of the equation. We can't just pull a log out of nowhere unless we're doing it to both sides of the equation. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take this exponent that we have and move it to the front. So we have 3x log of 15 is equal to log of 285. And now we want our log all on one side so we can solve for x. So we're going to divide by the log of 15. So it's going to cancel out on the left side, but we need to divide by the log of 15 on the right also. So now that it cancels out on the left, we have 3x is equal to the log of 285 over the log of 15. And now we know that we can just put this into our calculator. So we did problems like this on our last test. So first we're going to take the log of 285. And we get 2.45484. And then we're going to do the log of 15. And we get 1.17609. 1 and now I'm going to divide these two. So when I divide them, I keep that 3x the same on the left side. But I'm going to divide these two and get 2.087. And now to get it to x to be x equals, because we're trying to solve for x, since x is being multiplied by 3, to get rid of that 3, we're going to divide it on both sides. So it's going to cancel out on the left. And in our calculator, we're going to divide 2.087 by 3. And we get 6.26. 6. Any questions here? Okay, we have one more example just like this one with different bases. So again, here we cannot get this 25 to have a base of 2. So what we need to do is take the log of both sides of our equation. So we have the log of 2 raised to the y plus 1 is equal to the log of 25. Now we're going to take our exponent, move it to the front, so we have y plus 1 times the log of 2 is equal to the log of 25. And now we want our log on one side, so we're going to divide both sides by our log of 2. So it's going to cancel out on the left side, and our left side becomes y plus 1 is equal to the log of 25 over the log of 2. And now we need to put this into our calculator. So we keep that y plus 1 on the left side. Now we need to figure out what the log of 25 is. Yep, 1.3979. And then the log of 2 is 0 0.30103. And now I'm going to divide. So we have 1.3979. Divided by 0 0.30103. We keep that y plus 1 the same on the left. And when we divide these two, we get 4.643. So 
seven. It doesn't matter, again, how many decimals you write here, but the more decimals you keep with it, the more exact your answer is gonna be. So now our goal is to get y equals, we're trying to solve for y. So since one is being added to y to get it, get rid of it, to get y all by itself, we're going to subtract one from both sides. So it'll cancel out on the left, so we get y equals, and then we do 4.6437 minus one, so this becomes 3.64. Any questions here? Okay, so wait, Miss Carver, it's yeah. only three point sixty-four. Yeah, so I just dropped the last two decimal places that we had. Um it doesn't tell us to like round to the nearest anything but you guys can just keep two decimals in your answer so when you're doing okay. the homework you just need two decimals oh okay. i see what she did now Okay, our last type of problems are logarithmic equations. So to solve these, our number one thing is that we need it to have one log. So here we only have one log, so that's perfect. So what we're gonna do now is to put it into exponential form. So remember, that's when we take our base out of the basement. Our exponent comes from the other side of the equal sign, and then that's going to be equal to the answer. So here, we don't have a base. So when there's no base written, remember, it's a common log, so that implies that our base is 10. So here we have 10. We take our base out of the basement. Our exponent comes from the other side of the equals, so 10 squared, and then that's equal to 4x minus 3. And now we just solve for x. So 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10, 100. And that's equal to 4x minus 3. Now to solve for x, we can add 3 on both sides. So we have 103 is equal to 4x. And then we can divide by 4 on both sides. So we get 103 divided by 4 is equal to x. Which we could put this into the calculator and figure out what it is. It would be 25.75. But it all just depends on what it, it's asking you. You guys can leave your answer in fraction form. That's fine. Ms. Carver, why did you add the 10 again? The, because we didn't have a base here. And when we have a log with no base written... It's called a common log, so it implies that our base is 10. We learned that in 7.3, I believe. Okay. So remember, when there's no base written next to your log, so there's no like little number written next to it, that means that your base is a 10.
Any other questions on this one? All right, one last example. So here, remember, we said the first thing we need is one log. But here we have two logs. So what we need to do is combine them into one log. So when we have a log minus another log, remember minus means that we can change it to one log and divide it. So we're condensing it into one log and changing it to division. So we're going to only have one log of x divided by 2. We see that we have no base written here, so that implies that our base is 10. So I'm going to write our base down here as 10. And then this is just equal to 3. So now we can change this into exponential form so we can solve it. So we can get rid of that log by taking it from logarithmic form and putting it into exponential form. So our base comes out of the basement. Our exponent comes from the other side of the equal sign, and then that's equal to x over 2. So here we have 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000, and that's equal to x divided by 2. So now to get this to be x equals, we want x all by itself, and x is being divided by 2. To get rid of that 2, we need to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. So it's going to cancel out on the right side, and we have 1,000 times 2, which becomes 2,000. And this is our final answer.